Good morning, KB. Today is Monday, May 4th, 2020. Let's begin our day by singing our good morning song in English. I'll begin first and then it'll be your turn. Here I go. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, KB. Good morning to you. Your turn. Yay, thank you so much. Did you all have a good weekend? Did your caterpillar start turning into chrysalis? Yeah? Well, I missed you this weekend. I'm so glad I get to see you again. Let's begin our morning with a devotional. And today, I'm going to read you a story about God's love for you. So this story, the, the book, the, the name of this book is called God Loves Me More Than That. It's all about how much God loves you. How much love does God have for me? More than the letters between A through Z. Wow. God loves you more than that. More than the bumbles in a bumblebee. God loves me more than that. Tell me, please, is the Lord's love high? Higher than the moon in a starless sky. God's love for you is higher than the moon and higher than a space shuttle flying by. God loves me higher than that. Think of going to space and seeing a space shuttle and how high that is. Well, God's love for you is higher than that. Just how deep is God's love for me? Deeper than a treasure chest beneath the sea. Going all the way to the bottom of the ocean and finding the treasure chest. God's love for you goes deeper than that. And it's deeper than a wishing well could ever be. God loves me deeper than that. <gasps> Look what they're throwing down the wishing well. It's the quarter with George Washington. And a quarter is worth 25 cents. Tell me, please, is the Lord's love wide? Wider than a semi truck from side to side. Wow, that's a really long truck. And God's love for you goes beyond that. And it's wider than prairies where the cowboys ride. God loves me wider than that. It's really, really wide. Just how much does the Lord's love weigh? More than elephants munching on hay. Elephants weigh a lot of pounds. Well, God's love for you weighs more than that. And more than hippos on a rainy day. God loves me bigger than that. Have you ever tried to lift a hippo before? It's quite impossible because they're so big and heavy. Well, God's love for you is bigger than that. Tell me, please, is the Lord's love loud? Yes. Louder than the cheering of a football crowd. 
I don't know about you, but I've been to a football game before and it is loud because everyone is cheering for their favorite team. Well, God's love for you is louder than that. Louder than thunder, rumbling, storm-charged clouds. God loves me louder than that. I know a lot of you have heard thunder and lightning before, and it can make a really big sound, right? Sometimes it even scares us. Well, think about how loud that is, and God's love for you is louder than that. Is God's love soft? Won't you tell me, please? Softer than the sigh of a summer breeze. Look at the butterflies. Yeah, so God's love for you can be loud and big and wide and deep and high. But God's love for you can also be soft, like a soft summer breeze. and much softer than a kitten sneeze. Can you sneeze like a kitten right now? I think it would go like this. Achoo! God's love, God loves me softer than that. Lord, it's so great to be loved by you. Hope you know that I love you too. So God loves you. And you love God. It's nice to know that my whole life through, God loves me more than that. So every time you go to bed, you can be sure that God loves you so, so much. The end. I love that story because it shows us how much God loves you. He loves you so much that he would die on the cross for you. So let's pray and praise him and thank him for his love. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me so much. And I love you too. Help me to show your love to everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls. Well, today we are going to learn a new memory verse or a new Bible verse. I'm first going to show you by saying it and then we'll learn the song too. Okay, it goes like this. This is the message. So I want you to open a book. It's the Bible. The Bible has a message for us. It's a message from God. So it goes like this. This is the message. We have heard from him. So you're gonna like put your hand over your ear. Ready, echo. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. Let's do that again. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. God is light. Let's start from the beginning. Ready? This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. And then the song goes like this. This is a message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. Let's try it again. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. 
Let's do it one more time, but with the music. All right. This is the message we have heard from him and to claim to you. God is light in him there is. So let's do it again because this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. Yeah, we know that. God is light. There is no darkness in God. There is no sin in God. He's pure. He's holy. He's full of light. He's full of goodness and righteousness. We'll keep practicing that. And now, let's review special sounds. So we are going to review just the yellow set today. All right, and then we have a new one today as well. Okay, let's say the whole thing. Here we go. T-H-R says thur as in three. Those three letters together make the special sound thur. Gotta do it with me. Here we go. A R says R as in stars. Good job. A R says R. C H says ch as in church. We're gonna make a church. C H says ch ch ch. O R says or as in morning. Like you're getting up in the morning and you're stretching. Again, O R says or as in morning. This is a special sound we learned last week. And we learned that O W can make two sounds. The first sound that O W says is ow. Can you say that? Yeah, like someone hurt you in the arm or you fell down and you're going to say ow. O W says ow as in owl. So you can give yourself some owl eyes. And the next sound that O W can make is O W says O as in bowl. Mm -hmm. O W says O and O W says ow. Our new one for today is E R. The special sound E R says er. Can you say er? Er, as in verse, like a memory verse, verse. The sound er is not at the beginning or at the end. It's right in the middle. So if I were to stick out my arm and sound it out, I could hear it. Watch. Verse, verse. Like the Bible verse we're learning this week is, God is light. Okay, let's say it together. E R says er as in verse. Now, when I hear the sound er, I think about you're driving a car and then it stops all of a sudden, like you break it or your parents have to put the brake on. It goes er. You know that sound? 
So you're driving really fast in your car and then you have to stop suddenly and the car goes, er. Well, when I hear er, that's what I imagine. So I want us to pretend we're driving car, go er. Like you have to go back like, oh, we're braking, we're stopping. So we go, we go like this. E R says er as in verse. Now we're gonna learn tomorrow that the sound er has three different special sounds. So er can be spelled er, and tomorrow we're gonna learn a different way that the sound er can be spelled. But for today, Let's read the words that have the E-R-R -er sound. So sound it out with me. Er, mm, fern. Fern is a kind of plant. Let's do this one. Er, her. Like, look at her dress. It's purple. Let's do this one. B, uh, t, er, butter, butter, like you put butter on your toast, butter. Let's do this one. B, er, ch, perch, not porch, perch. It's like when a bird sits on a tree branch, we say it's it's perched on a branch, perch. Okay, so let's review. I'll say it and then we'll do it together. E-R says er as in verse. Now your turn. Good job. We'll keep practicing this one. It is also on your special sounds list that I have linked in Google Classroom. So you can print that out and you can write it on a flashcard and practice it at home. And now we have a new sight word this week. This is your new sight word this week. It's the word, do you know? You do! Wow! Some of you already know how to read this word. If I were to sound it out, I would do this. S-ch-ol. S-ch-ol. But s-ch-ol is not a word. So remember, sight words are words that we just have to memorize the letters and then read it automatically in our head. Well, this word, S-C-H-O-O-L, is the word school. Can you say that? School. A lot of you on your um, uniform shirts that you wear to school, that you wear to school, have the word school on it because it says Lakewood Christian School on it. So S-C-H-O-O-L is the word school. Like, what school, what school do you go to? Mm-hmm, Lakewood Christian School. Um, are you in elementary school or are you in middle school? Elementary school. Are you in preschool? No, you're a big kindergartner. Um, what city is your school in? Yeah, we're located in the city Long Beach, but we call ourselves Lakewood Christian Schools. And my last question is, what do you learn at school? What do you learn at school? Yeah, we learn about Jesus. We learn about how we learn how to read, how to write, how to count, how to be friends, how to love one another. There's a lot that you learn at school. 
And you know what's really cool is even though our school is closed, we can still be together at your home. Your home is now a school. Okay, so I'm going to teach you the song of how to spell this word and then read the word too. It goes like this. Ready? I'm going to build a school with my hands, making the roof of a school. Here we go. S-C-H-O-O-L. It is time to go to school. School is fun and school is cool. S-C-H-O-O-L. Okay, now you're going to echo me, okay? Ready? Echo. S-C-H-O-O-L. It is time to go to school. Pretend you have a backpack on. You're putting your backpack on. Ready? Um, school is fun. And school is cool. S-C-H-O-O-L. Good job. So how do you spell school? Well, I sang it. S-C-H-O-O-L. It is time to go to school. Good job. Okay. Now, let's look at our caterpillars who have turned into chrysalis. So get out your butterfly observation journal. Looks like this. Okay, are you ready? Here are my caterpillars who have turned into chrysalis. Can you see that? Make it a little bit brighter. Look, they've turned into chrysalis. I actually have three chrysalis on the ground. I hope and pray they are okay because they fell off the top. And then I have four chrysalis stuck on the top. So seven, so four chrysalis plus three chrysalis equals seven chrysalis. So I have seven butterflies. But that's what I'm gonna draw today and whatever you have at home in your caterpillar cup, that's what you're gonna draw. Okay, so I get out my butterfly journal. It's really cool to look at my journal because I get to see how the caterpillar changed from caterpillar to bigger caterpillar to a really big caterpillar to a caterpillar who made himself a J and hung on the top, then took off its skin or shell and made a chrysalis and more chrysalis. And today is day seven, day seven. So, oops, today is actually day eight, day eight, eight, <laughs> not seven. Okay. I'm going to write the number eight, like so. Okay, and what stage is my caterpillar in? It's in the chrysalis stage. So I get my green crayon and I color the chrysalis green to show that it's a chrysalis, like that. And then I'm going to draw my four chrysalis. Here I go. They look like, um, you know what they look like? They look like green peas. Have you ever had green peas or edamame before? They look like that. But you know why they're green, boys and girls? Because they look kind of look like leaves, don't they? And so they blend in with their environment. And that way, the birds and the wasps don't eat them. God did that on purpose to keep 
the butterflies safe. I love the way that God created things. And God created us in that same way too. Like, if you think about it, God gave you skin to protect your body. Our skin protects our muscles and our bones and our heart. Um, God gave you eyebrows so that when you're out on a sunny day, it like protects your eyes from being burned by the sun. And he gave you eyelids to be to protect your eyes from the sun. So the same way that God created chrysalis to have um to blend in with their environment is the same way that God created you. He created you in a very wonderful and special and protective way. Okay. Day eight, I see four chrysalis, and then I'm going to write what I see. Well, it already started the sentence for me with I see, so that means I got to add a chrysalis. So a, sight word, a, finger space, chrysalis. And that word chrysalis is provided for you on the top. So all you have to do is look at that and copy it. So day eight, we see a chrysalis. I have four of them in my Cairo. I see a chrysalis. All right. We learned about butterflies last week, and then this week we're gonna learn about a new insect. The next insect we're learning this week is, do you know? Starts with the O. Yeah, ladybugs. That's our new insect this week that we're going to learn about. Okay. Um, special set for your da daily schedule. You can print this out from Google Classroom. It looks like this, week seven. And today is what day? Today is Monday. So today we had our class meeting on Zoom. I love when I get to spend time with you and see how you're doing. And today you need to get your book three and read pages two through five to your stuffed animals. They love it when you read stories to them because they can't read. So they need someone to read books to them. And who better than you? You're their favorite person. And so they love when you take the time to read to them. Okay, so we're all done with book two, which was the yellow book. And now you've moved on to book three. That's because you're growing up. So today you are going to get your I Can Read Well book three. This is in the new learning packet that I dropped off at your house. So you're gonna have to look in that new learning packet and make sure it says book three. Okay, today you need to read pages two. It's a story about a cat named Pete. <gasps> kind of like Pete the cat, huh? But a different cat named Pete. So you read pages two, page three, and then you're also gonna read page four, a girl who loves to pray just like you your boys and girls that love to pray. And look, she's on her knees, just like how you guys do, to show honor and respect to God. And then you're gonna read page five. So again, the stories you are reading today are page two and three, My Cat Pete. And there's a sight word on the bottom, T-O, which you know is two. Two is written with the T and then an O, two, two. And then you're going to read the story about the girl who loves to pray, page four. And then the one with the train, the bullet train, you're going to read page five. These are words that have special sounds and two vowels. So make sure you read them with long sound and then silent sound. You can also, after reading this to your stuffies, time yourself and see how fast you can read all these words. 
then see if you can beat your last time. So if I read all of these words in two minutes, I want to make a goal to read it in a minute and 45 seconds to make it faster. Once you're all done with that, it's time to practice our writing. Today, you are going to write, you're going to uh, practice your writing from in this worksheet. Writing page 151 and 152. Has uppercase T, lowercase T, and some pigs, and then a girl with the cat. Okay, so make sure you write your first name and your last name up on the top. You are practicing writing uppercase T, lowercase T. And what does T say? T, T, T. Good job. You're going to trace it, write it, write it. Trace it, write it, write it. Trace it. Then you're going to write words that have the letter T in it. V, is, this. And then you write this again. Let's read this word together. V, at, that. And then you're going to write the word that over here. And finally, you're going to write a sentence that has uppercase T and lowercase T in it. You're writing the sentence, that is a fat pig. I think they're talking about that one over there. Does he look like a fat pig to you? He kind of does, huh? Do you see how I read that sentence? with an exclamation point, with an excited voice. I didn't just read it like, that is a fat pig. That would be if it had a period. I read it like this. That is a fat pig. So you're gonna trace that sentence and write it on the bottom. And please be sure to write all sentences with an uppercase letter first finger spaces between the words, and you have to add that punctuation at the end. So be careful not to forget the exclamation point. That's part of a sentence. And then on the back, you're gonna write two more sentences. Anne has a fat cat. <laughs> so a fat pig and a fat cat, and it is black and gray. How many of you have a cat at home? Yeah, some of us have cats, some of us have dogs, some of us have fish, some of us have turtles, some of us have hamsters, lots of different kind of pets we have. All right, so I want you to turn this into Google Classroom when you're done so I can make sure that you're writing your sentences correctly. Remember, finger spaces, first letter is uppercase, and always end in a punctuation. Okay, after that, it's time to do your math worksheet 123. 123. It looks like this, and we're going to do this together. So I'm going to help you out. So let's first things first do what? Write our first name and our last name. Some of you are writing your middle names and it's wowing me. I'm so glad you learned how to write your middle name too. That's like what a first grader does. Okay, so you need to write your first and your last name up on the top. And today we are reviewing 3D shapes. Can you say that? 3D shapes. We know 2D, 2D shapes. 2D shapes are like circle and square and triangle and rectangle and diamond and trapezoid and parallelogram. But now we've moved on to 3D shapes. Those are shapes that pop out at you. They have dimension. They're a little bit different because you can fit stuff inside of it. So let's review what we've learned so far. Okay. We've learned about cylinders. Say cylinders. Cylinders. A cylinder has a circle on the top 
a circle on the bottom. It rolls and has two straight lines connecting the two circles, right? And also, cylinders, you can fit stuff inside of it. You can fill it up with something. Like this one used to be filled up with hand wipes. And now they're all gone. So now what's inside of it? It's air. So again, what 3D shape is this? Cylinder. A circle on the top, a circle on the bottom, two straight lines, and it can roll and be filled with something. That's a cylinder. We've also learned about um, cubes. This is my cube. A cube is made up of squares. A square has four lines that are equal, right? And so there's a square here, a square here, a square here, a square here, a square on the top, a square on all sides. And cubes can be filled with something, right? This used to be, or this is a tissue box, and it used to have what inside? Yeah, tissues. Right now, all the tissues are gone. So now what's inside of this? It's air. Do you see how this is different than a square? A square would be flat. A square would be 2D. But a cube? A cube is made up of many squares put together. And it's three-dimensional. And it can be filled with something, right? So that's a cube. We've got a 3D shaped cylinder. How about you tell me what this is? What 3D shape, shape is this? Good. What 3D shape is this? Good. So cylinder and cube. We've also learned about a cone. Say cone. Cone. This is a birthday hat. But what fit me? Let's see. It does fit me. Look, I have a cone on top of my head. A lot of you have worn these before. Did you know that it was a cone that was on top of your head? Yeah. So a cone on the bottom has a circle. What shape is that? Circle. And the two lines come together and connect at the top. It does look like a triangle from one side, but you'll notice it's not really like a flat triangle. So with the cone, the two lines come together and cones can be filled in with something, right? Right now there's nothing inside of this, it's just air. So this is a cone. I have another cone to show you. You've probably seen this, seen this on the street or maybe when you play soccer. Yeah, this is a cone too. It does have a square on the bottom, but do you see there's a circle on the bottom, say a circle on the bottom and two lines coming together. And it does look like a triangle, kind of. And the cones can be filled in with something. Right now, there's nothing filled in here. It's just air. But we could put something inside here, couldn't we? Cone. Okay. And the last one we learned was, yes, sphere. Say sphere. Sphere. Sphere looks like a ball. It's round. It can roll and it could be filled in with something. There's something inside this ball. What could it be? Yeah, air. But sometimes spheres like this one, they're not filled in with air. It's filled in with cotton cotton. So some spheres 
you filled in with air or cotton or foam. Think of a basketball. What is it filled up with? You're to cut a basketball in half and open it up. What would you see inside that sphere? Air. But what about um, a baseball? If you were to cut a baseball in half, open it up, what would be inside? Yeah, it has lots of like strings inside. And so spheres can be filled in with something. So spheres round, it rolls, and it can be filled in with something. Okay, let's review all of our 3D shapes. What is the shape called? Cylinder, good. What is the shape called? Cube, good job. What is this shape called? Cone. And what is this shape called? Sphere, very nice. Now let's go back to your math worksheet. So we're gonna look at this first row. And it says to put an X on the picture of the object that doesn't belong with the group. Okay, so here is a group of 3D shapes. One does not belong. Let's find it out. So tell me what shape that is. Cone, good, like an ice cream cone. What shape is that? Cube, cone, cone. So which one was different than the others? Which one doesn't belong? The cube, so we put an X on the cube. There were three cones and one cube, and it doesn't belong. So we put, we put an X. All right, let's try the next one. What shape is that? Cylinder, good job. Cylinder. That's also a cube and Cylinder. So which one doesn't belong? Cylinder, cylinder, cube, cylinder. Yep, it's the cylinder. Put an X on it. Poor cylinder, he just wants to fit in, but he doesn't look like the rest. Okay, time to go to the next group. Ready? Tell me the shape. Sphere. Sphere, sphere, and a cube. Which one does not belong? That one. Put an X over it. Okay. Now the directions say this. Get out your red crayon. R E D red. Are you ready? Color the cones red. Color the cones red. Which one is a cone? The ice cream cone, the birthday hat cone, and the cone. Color those red. And ice cream cones sure sounds good right now. Have you ever had from Trader Joe's? They're the they're like little ice cream cones. They're like this big, super tiny, and they're like chocolate coated. And there's like vanilla ice cream, or it can be chocolate ice cream inside. Have you had those before? Oh my goodness, they're my favorite. I could eat like two in one day. They're my favorite kind of ice cream cone. Okay, cones are red, perfect. 
The next direction says, get out your yellow crayon. Get out your Y-E-L-L-O-W crayon. Yellow. Yellow is my favorite color because it's like sunshine and it reminds me of Jesus. And it's like happy, happy color, yellow. And the directions say to color the spheres, spheres, yellow. Color the spheres, yellow. Which one are the spheres, boys and girls? Yep, here, here, here. Spheres are round. Spheres can roll. Spheres look like circles. And spheres can be filled in with something. I see a tennis ball, or is that a baseball, a globe, and a soccer ball. They're all spheres, perfect. Okay, so your worksheet should look like this so far. And the last direction is get out your green crayon. Green crayon, G-R-E-E-N, green. And you are going to color the cylinders green. The cylinders green. Which ones are the cylinders? Yeah, the only ones left. There's a circle on the top, a circle on the bottom, two straight lines connecting it, and they're filled in with something. And cylinders can also roll. Okay, so I see the glass of water or the glass of juice. The soda is a cylinder. The can of soup is a cylinder. Perfect. Um, what shape is red? Cone, good. What shape is yellow? Spheres. And what shape is green? Cylinders. Okay. When you go to the back side, you are practicing writing numbers from 11 to last number is 3030. So you start with 11 and then you count 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and you go all the way to 30. Be careful not to do this. You put 11 here, 12, and then sometimes I see like a double 12 because we're not counting the 12. So make sure you count as you go. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, like that. You're going all the way to 30. And then when you're done with this, boys and girls, it needs to be turned into Google Classroom. Okay, and now, the next thing you're gonna do is print out, you probably have it printed out already, but you're gonna get your number cards, your one through 30 number cards. I gave them to you like this in Google Classroom. Numbers one through 30, and you're gonna cut them out. You probably already have them cut out. You're gonna mix them up so it gives you a challenge and your job is to put them in order from 1 through 30. I want you to send me a video to see, to show me how fast you can do it. Have someone record you putting numbers 1 through 30 together and let me see how fast you can do it. It's very important that you do that one, boys and girls, because it's important for you to know how to start from 1 and go all the way to 30. Okay, and then the last thing you're gonna do is your Ladybug Life Cycle Worksheet. So that is found in your craft packet that I dropped off at your house with all the other Ladybug materials. So go to your craft packet to find it. It looks like this. Ladybug. A ladybug is another kind of insect and I'm going to teach you about it right now. So this is what it looks like, the worksheet, but first let's learn about it. Okay, do you see it? It says sight word, look at a ladybug. 
I love ladybugs. I love butterflies and I love ladybugs. So I'm really excited to teach about this. What do you notice about the ladybug? Yes, it has two antennas. Remember how the butterfly had two antennas? And what did those antennas help the butterfly do? Smell, hear, and feel. I wonder if the antennas of the ladybug do the same thing. And now, look how many legs does the ladybug have. Can you count them? One, two, three, four, five, six. It has how many legs? Six. And when a bug has six legs, that's when you know it's an insect. So a ladybug is an insect. And now look at the main color of the ladybug. What color do you see? Yeah, it looks like red or red orange. And there's black spots on it. It has a head. Let's read about it. Learn about ladybugs. Okay, the first thing we're going to learn is that ladybugs have six legs. We just talked about that. They have six legs. That means they are an insect. Here's the next fact about ladybugs. Ladybugs fly. They have two pairs of wings. Can you see that one? Okay. Ladybugs fly with two sets of wings. Did you know that? Not just the red shells are their wings, but underneath the red shells are two thin, um, very like papery thin, like tissue paper. Think of like, you know, tissue paper when you're unwrapping a gift like how thin and crinkly that is, that is their wings underneath. It's very thin, very light, and they spread those out to fly. The wings on top, the red ones with the black dots, those are harder, like a shell, to protect the ladybug, to protect the wings underneath. Okay, next, ladybugs feel things with their antennas. They're called feelers. <gasps> Just like the butterfly. The butterfly uses its antennas to feel and to also smell and hear. But I think just for the ladybug, they just feel. They feel with their antennas. And last thing, ladybugs eat tiny insects called aphids, and aphids harm plants. Okay, so ladybugs, unlike the butterfly, they eat aphids, which are another kind of insect. So an insect is eating an insect. But you wanna know something so cool that God did? These tiny aphids on the plant hurt the plant. When aphids are on a plant, the plant goes like this, ouch, ouch, you're eating me, you're hurting me. So the plants that we love, like apple trees and roses and orange trees, think of all the beautiful plants God provided us. Those plants don't like it when these aphids are on them because they hurt them. Well, guess who's going to come to the rescue? The ladybug. Because, thankfully, ladybugs like to eat aphids. So they're going to take care of plants by eating the aphids off of it. If plants could talk to ladybugs, I'm sure the plants would say, Oh, thank you, ladybugs. Thank you for saving the day. These aphids were eating me and hurting me. And now they're all gone because you ate them. That's how God designed it. He designed 
ladybugs to help out the plants. And ladybugs love to eat aphids anyway, so it's a win-win. Let's review. Ladybugs have six legs, so they're an insect. They have two sets of wings to fly. Their antennas help them feel. And ladybugs love to eat aphids. Now, just like how we learned the life cycle of a butterfly, which was what? Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. Remember, butter butterflies go through a metamorphosis. They change in these different stages. Well, ladybugs also go through major changes. So I'm going to show you. Ladybugs all start off as eggs. A ladybug lays yellow eggs on a leaf. Kind of like the caterpillar. Remember, the caterpillar lays a white egg on a leaf. Well, these ones are oval, not a circle, and they're yellow. But it's still an egg. Next, out of the egg hatches a larva. A larva has six legs but no wings. So the next stage of the butterfly was a caterpillar, but for the ladybug, it's a larva. Can you say larva? Mm-hmm. So egg, larva, no wings, but six legs. And do you know what the larva turns into? Oh, I don't like that picture, but the larva forms, oh, sorry. The larva forms a covering, like a hard shell, and then it becomes a pupa. Can you say pupa? Doesn't it look like a brain? That looks nothing like the ladybug. Well, thankfully, the larva grows up and out, sorry, the pupa come, grows up and out comes a ladybug. And it has wings and it can fly away. So let's review the life cycle of a butterfly. Oops, ladybug is, ready, say egg, larva, pupa, ladybug, egg, larva, pupa, ladybug. How I remember pupa, is like when I see the pupa, it makes me want to puke because it's so gross. So that's how I think of pupa. That one. Not as pretty as a chrysalis, huh? Okay, so now you're going to get out this worksheet and write your name on the top. This is the ladybug life cycle. You're also going to need your scissors and your glue stick. All right, I'm going to write my name on the top, first and last. The title of this is Ladybug Life Cycle. All right, so they already have the life cycle here for us. I see egg, I'm gonna follow the arrow. Egg, larva, oh, pupa, and then a ladybug. It went from something really weird to something beautiful. Again, the life cycle of a ladybug is egg, larva, pupa, ladybug. Well, all it's missing that you need to do is the words. It's missing the words that go underneath each picture. So please cut out the four words. You're gonna cut out ladybug, pupa, larva, and egg. So first I cut on that straight line. Cut it off on the bottom. Then I can start cutting out these words. So if I'm done cutting before you, just pause the video when you're ready 
and then come back to it and I'll help you glue the right words under each picture. I'm cutting out the word egg. I'm cutting out the word larva. Sounds like lava, but it's larva. Cutting out the words ladybug, pupa. Ladybugs and butterflies have a lot in common. For one thing, they're both insects. Also, they both have wings. They also have four stages that they go through. They have antennas that both feel. And they're beautiful. God created them in a beautiful way. Okay, I have all my pieces cut out. And now I need to glue them. So my first picture, how all ladybugs start off, is what? What is that called? Egg. So I need to find the egg label. Egg. Egg. And then get your glue stick and just, it's too hard to glue this part. Just put the glue in the rectangle in the, on the big paper. Like this. And then stick it on. Perfect. After egg, the eggs hatch out a larva. A larva has six legs, but no wings, so it can't fly. Like that. Then the larva forms a covering over itself and it becomes a pupa. Looks interesting. Looks like a brain. All right, we've got egg, larva, pupa, and finally it becomes a what? A ladybug, exactly. So we glue the word ladybug with ladybug. Okay, after this, you're gonna color it according, according to what it is. So remember how we said ladybugs lay eggs, yellow eggs on a green leaf. So you're gonna get out your yellow crayon to color the eggs and then your green crayon to color the leaf. I'll show you in just a second. So it should look like that. Then, Let's go back to the ladybug magazine. Out of the egg comes a larva. Do you see the color? It's like black and orange. So that's what I'm gonna use, black and orange. Doesn't matter what orange you use, just an orange. Kind of like Halloween colors. Black and orange. Has six legs, but can't fly. There we go. All right, egg, larva. Next up, pupa. Let's see what colors the pupa is. Ooh, it's like a red, orange, and black spots. So I'm gonna get my red, orange crayon. which is this color and color it red orange with black spots. You know how we bought the caterpillar cups to watch our butter uh, caterpillars turn into butterflies? Well, you can actually get 
ladybugs in a cut too to watch them turn into a larva and then a pupa and then a ladybug too. Maybe that's something you can do this summer. Okay, egg, larva, pupa, and then the ladybug. So ladybugs have a red shell. Some of them have different, you're right. Some of them have orange or yellow, but I'm gonna make mine red with black spots, a black body, a black head, and a black and black legs. Black legs. So the only part of the ladybug that's red is the red shell. Everything else is black. And what do ladybugs love to eat? Aphids. And the plants are like so happy. Those mean aphids were hurting them. So ladybugs are kind of like superheroes. Okay, so that's what the final product should look like. And then you're all done. So you should be very proud of yourself. That was a lot of work today, but you did it. So give yourself that pat on the back and say, good job, self. You can do it, kindergarten. You've been working so hard these past few weeks, and we're gonna keep going, okay? We can do it. And then pretty soon, it's gonna be summer, and you're gonna be a big first grader, and I can't wait to give you this big hug showing you how proud I am of you and how much I love you. Well, let's sing our goodbye song. Not speaking Italian this week, we're speaking English. So here we go. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you. Goodbye, KB. Goodbye to you. Your turn. And Jesus loves you and I love you. Bye KB. I'll see you tomorrow.